Hello, everybody. My name is MJ the Tutor, and you are listening to another episode of Accounting Makes Sense, an MJ the Tutor podcast. This podcast is focused on helping accounting students all over the world by offering a quick warm up on various accounting and business topics that hopefully leads to the generation of bigger discussions and conversation. For all those studying or thinking about doing SEMA right now, this is for you. In today's episode, we will be discussing a performance management tool that's been around for a very long time, one that is certainly quite popular in SEMA exam circles, and that is the Balance Scorecard, or BSC for short. We're going to look at how to use it in a simple everyday scenario. Stay tuned till the end as I'm going to discuss some of the criticisms around its use. So let's break it down. And I'll let you guys imagine this scenario on how a balanced scorecard can be used. Once there was a teen named Missy. Missy recently got a part-time job working for a coffee shop in town as a barista. Whenever Missy is on her shift, she gets allocated a cash register, a till to manage. She takes orders and makes coffees for customers. At the end of her shift, the cash register's money is tallied up and whatever the total balance is, is the revenue that Missy has made for the company that day. Now, we know as baristas and most customer service-oriented fast food roles, the employees are paid based on the hours that they worked. The longer you work, the more pay you get. So in this scenario, Missy gets paid the minimum wage rate at however much hours she's worked. Missy takes orders and makes coffees. The company pays her a salary. So very financial but straightforward transaction. What isn't included in this deal is the fact that Missy is quite a personable barista. Customers find her pleasant and attentive to their orders and needs. Because of this, some of the regulars often line up to be served by Missy. Some even specifically choose to come to this coffee shop because of the nice barista. As evidence, we can see the effect that non-financial factors can have on a business. Non-financial aspects like having a friendly personality, offering a warm welcome to the customers can ultimately lead to loyalty and following, which then leads to higher revenue. This is where the balance scorecard comes in handy. A balance scorecard, as mentioned earlier, is a tool used in performance management. So it's actually a great tool used by managers to keep track and monitor the achievement of objectives and goals. And the goals don't necessarily have to be about financial performance and numbers only, as it can incorporate a mix of non-financial measures as well. There are four perspectives that a balance scorecard focuses on. The first perspective is financial. In business, this is a given. Companies will always look at margins and the bottom line to ensure the profit is still being made. Making profits is singularly still the greatest sign of success for any company. The measures that a company can use to monitor financial perspectives vary. Measures could include return on investment, revenue growth year on year, financial ratios like inventory turnover, and many others. The second perspective is customer. Now, in our barista example, Missy's action and personality entice customers to buy coffee and stay as loyal customers. This is essentially what customer perspective looks at. How much of the market does the company hold? How satisfied are the customers with the products or services? How many new customers are coming in for the coffee or for Missy specifically? You see, Missy personifies a brand. And in turn, this representation looks good on Missy's coffee shop. So if we are looking at it from a customer perspective, we can even say which coffee shop yields the highest revenue. The third perspective is the internal business perspective. Now, this focuses on internal processes. And I know that we didn't really get to elaborate a lot about this in the barista example that we had. But to expand on that situation a little bit, I would say that internal business perspective could cover the process and productivity of the coffee making operations. How productive are the baristas? 
How many coffee does Missy actually serve during her shift? How often does the wrong coffee order get done? Meaning how many mistakes are happening? How often does the coffee or espresso machine go down? So those are the kinds of questions that are actually covered by this perspective. The last perspective is learning and growth. Now this focuses on growth potential of the company as well as within the company. So this includes the employees and their growth. In our barista scenario, learning and growth would cover measures such as employee turnover, how often do we hire or lose employees, how often do we send the baristas to a health and safety training, and how long do we train them for. Growth will also cover the discovery of new coffee products. So perhaps the creation of a new taste, an apple crisp macchiato, or a pumpkin spice frappuccino, or a cinnamon oat latte, that kind of thing. So as you can see, the balance scorecard is a nifty tool that can be used by any kind of business and for any level within the company. There's a plethora of measures to choose from, but of course, even though it's a good tool, there are criticisms against it. The first issue, as you can probably guess, are the measures. Since there are so many to choose from, it can get pretty daunting and overwhelming to find the right ones. And sometimes companies may also choose too many that it loses its sight on what the real objectives are. The key is to ensure that the measures you choose contribute to the achievement of the overall goals and objectives of the company. And you also have to be realistic when you choose because while there are a lot of measures, there is also only so much that the company can do within a time frame. So if you choose too many, the company can become inundated with data that will be deemed irrelevant because they can't really act on it. Plus, not to mention you're going to drive your barista mad. The second issue is that BSC needs the support of higher management. Since BSC affects a lot of areas within an organization, it's going to be difficult to gather any kind of information on all these areas if you do not have the proper support. So higher management may sometimes need more convincing as to the benefits of BSC. It should be seen as more than an expensive exercise with no purpose. It's obviously clear that in our barista example, Missy won't be able to do this alone. The third issue is that BSC does require a lot of data. So hence compiling the information, reports, and results for BSC will take a lot of time and resources from the company. And even once you've already got BSC in place, it can still cost the company money because it needs a steady flow of information being fed into it to stay relevant and updated. Don't make it that Missy will have to actually be on BSC duty all the time because as we all know, she loves serving the customers. The list of concerns is not exhaustive. And I'm sure if you really want to, you can probably come up with some other problems that the BSC can bring about. So the important thing here is to remember that both financial and non-financial performance metrics could be beneficial to the company. It shows that the company has a short and long-term view of strategies because ultimately, deep down, every company wants to succeed. And that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Missy the Barista and the Balance Core Card. Thank you for listening to Accounting Makes Sense. I'm your host, MJ the Tutor. If you're keen to connect to be updated with the arrival of the next episode of this podcast or find SEMA resources online, please head on over to my website, www.fjthetutor.com, and you can also hit that subscribe button on whichever platform you are using to listen to this podcast. If you want to connect with me on social media, I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the name MJ the Tutor. And I hope to see you again next time. Ciao for now!